Okay. And Larry, uh, okay, so we have a quorum. So we'll get started. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the June meeting of the EDC, and the agenda is on the screen. Um, I have called the meeting to order. Uh, we have additions or deletions to the agenda. As usual, we have citizen comments up front, but we usually allow them if we have time, which I think we will for the other topics. So if you have a comment that isn't related to what's on the agenda, make it up front. Otherwise, if you can hold it and we can discuss it at the time. Um, we have to approve the minutes. We have a quick financial update. Uh, things are improving a bit, which is good. And we'll share that. Uh, a new family survey is the one item of new business and Stuart Catherine Matthews is here to, uh, to update us on that and she'll do that. And then uh, we'll just go through the working groups and the two projects. Um, and we may not have updates for many of the working groups, but if we do, that's, uh, that would be great. And that's it. Okay, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Now, and for those of you that are that I that are not on camera, uh, feel free to just jump in because I can't see if you're raising your hands or not. Okay, hearing none. Um, are there any citizen comments that ideally are related not to the other items on the agenda, Jeff? Yeah. Um, question. Not totally EDC, but I see Beth is here. Um, where, where, when are the flower pots going up uh, in the village? Oh. Normally, well, that's Memorial Weekend, Find Memorial Weekend. Hold on. Where am I? Um, well, that is a good question, and that's a bill question, because unfortunately, when we got the brackets, they didn't come with the hardware. The hardware had to be overnighted, and so the guys came on the day the brackets were there but the hardware wasn't the flower pots are ready to be hung they're ready to be picked up at the high school but we have to get the brackets up if i can interject here uh yeah the brackets should go up tomorrow <coughs> okay and then we will if if anyone that's listening or here wants to help um the pots are 32 inches around and they just have to be hung it's not like no screws, no vice grips, no nothing. Um, but we will need some help putting them up. Thanks, when, for, the, thanks for the update, Beth. Appreciate and it. And when is that, Beth? When do you need the help? Tomorrow, after the, immediately after their... Or sa it might be Saturday morning um, because, you know, I want to make sure the brackets are all up first. Okay, well, anyway, you should just inform people when you... I will. Thank you. Oh. All right, any other comments? Okay, um, approval of the minutes from May 6th. The minutes are, all the documents for tonight are posted on the EDC website. Um, does anyone, uh, could we have a motion to approve the minutes and if we have any discussion? Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Move. Joe moves. Joe has moved, Larry seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Raise your hand. Joe and Devin, we, we just need to hear you so that we don't have to take a roll call. We just to make sure that it's unan unanimous. Otherwise. Yes, I, I vote yes. Okay. Thanks. Yes, for me as well. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. Um, and we have no, okay, good. So uh, the minutes are approved. Financial update. Um, let me share the screen again and give you all a quick update. Uh, whoops. Can you see that? It doesn't have the little green thing around it. Am I sharing my screen or my uh, or the document? The document. Okay, good. Okay, so um, this uh, top half of this page shows the EDC forecast that we showed at the last meeting. Uh, and what that showed is we had our, if you can see the cursor here, we had our revenues for the first quarter. It's really the fourth quarter. Remember that we call it February, but that covers the period October, November, December. So we had our first quarter revenue, 48,000, which was 44% down from 2019. We're using 2019 as the last normal year because 2020 was not a normal year. So down, remember 2020, we were at about 300,000 of revenue. 20, 2019, sorry, 2020, we were down to 200,000, but we had a pretty normal first quarter and then it kind of fell off the map. 
So now we're comparing in 2021, our first quarter, which is really fourth quarter of last year calendar wise, was down 44%. And what we showed you last month was assuming that that 44% would continue because that was the only data we had. And that would mean we would end up with 165,000 of revenue for the year. And that's what we were quote forecasting as a conservative estimate. We figured that the rest of the year wouldn't be worse than the first quarter. We now have the second quarter data, which, request, which reflects our January, February, March activity. And it's down from 2019, but not as much as we thought. So it's improved from 44% down to 30% down. So you can see that instead of 31,000, it's 39,000. So if we assume that trend continues for the rest of the year, for the third and the fourth quarter and doesn't improve, which again, I think is conservative, we'll end up with revenues of about $30,000 more about 197 instead of 165. And to put that into context, just to finish up and put that into context at the end of the year, uh, we showed a chart this year, uh, last meeting, which said we would end the year with about $330,000 of unencumbered funds. Remember that we have released all of the moratorium funds. So there's no longer a category for holding back or whatever. We haven't distributed all of them, but we've released them. And so they're not hours anymore. They're just waiting to be given to the grantees. And we will now end the year, if this 197 forecast proves accurate, we'll now end the year with, with $360,000 of, uh, of funds available. And hopefully begin next year, in, if we were to stick with our past schedule, to have an annual granting process in January, as we did the last time. We might call for grants to be submitted in you know, October, starting in October. So we get them in December, have an annual meeting in January where we compare all the grants, including our own requests. And we then allocate funds. And the funds that we would have available for 2022 would be the funds we expect to get in 2022, which might be more than 165,000, I would hope. And probably not higher than 300,000. I'm sorry, more than 197,000, which is what we're now forecasting. And maybe as high or not as high as 2019, we'd have to decide. And so those would be the funds that we would have to allocate plus $360,000 of money that we have accumulated. So that's kind of currently our financial picture. We're not gonna talk about it much other than that tonight. I just wanted to keep everybody apprised. And in another three months, we will have another update. We'll have this number. In August, we'll have the number for April, May, and June, and we'll continue to update our forecast. Any questions? And, and Sally, jump in if I've done something here that you think is not correct. Right? No, looks good to me. Okay, thank you. Any um, any questions? Okay, I, I, sorry. There was a, a private comment, but but. Um, I accepted that red usually means negative. Yes, I agreed. Uh, red is um, red here is is figures in red or forecast. But uh, next time I'll change that to some other some other color. <laughs> um, any um, any other comments? Okay. Uh, next is the new family survey, um, and Catherine is going to take us through it. Actually, it's Stuart Matthews is going to take you through it. Uh, I'm visiting my mother, and so the, the camera is, is registered to her. Um, so I'm working with John on a couple different committees, and this survey was really intended to inform our work on, I would say, both of those efforts. One of them is the rejuvenation or investment in downtown, and the other is attracting new businesses. Uh, the idea was to, uh, the idea was that we believed that we had um, through a number of surveys done over the years, had a pretty good sense of what um, former, or I would say, you know, historical residents of Woodstock believed and thought. Uh, and we wanted to capture the new families, people that had 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 moved to town more recently and 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 chosen proactively to live in Woodstock. Um, we wanted to understand who they were, why they why they had come. Um, what attracted them, what challenges they saw, and also uh, what their perception was uh, of, of the town now that they've moved here. So 
Uh, that was our effort. We, we, I ended up connecting with 17 families thus far. I have more, more still that I can speak with. Um, I reached out to more than 17, but I didn't always connect with people. Uh, the average age, 33, it ranged from 65 to 25 uh, in terms of the heads of the households. And uh, the cutoff that I used was three years. In some cases, it, that most people were, were sort of zero to two, um, but there were a few people that had been there um, a little bit longer than that. For the most part, people moved to Woodstock because of COVID, but the, um, the reason they moved that was that their jobs went remote and they were able to choose where they could live and they chose to move to Woodstock. So it was, it was more of a case of people, once they had the opportunity um, to make a choice about where they lived because of the fact they could work remote, they proactively decided, they looked around and proactively decided to move to Woodstock. In some cases, they had a connection to the area. Uh, it ranged from, you know, they might've gotten married here, had a wedding here, had visited here when they were kids, uh, had vacationed at the inn at one point. Um, but in other cases, they simply did research and like what they found on the internet, visited and decided to stay. They, um, a number of people commented on the, the Woodstock Vermont website uh, as being a really great representative of the town and a, and a great selling feature, uh, if you will, for the town. Um, interestingly, 83% uh, of those that we surveyed purchased a home and um, they all said they planned on staying permanently, that, that they were not viewing this as a temporary, um, you know, sojourn before they moved on to somewhere else. But, uh, and at the end of the survey, I, I asked them, well, I'll get to that, but, but they purchased the home because they intended to stay here permanently. Stuart, because, before you go on to the next, I just have a quick question. Did anyone, did, maybe you didn't ask this, but did anyone move here without visiting first? Um, there was, I don't believe anybody moved here without visiting, but a number of people moved here after one visit. I think they just did, Ivan. Re did research and, and um, liked what they saw, came to town and decided to buy a house and stay. But, but the people that, that uh, did that really had, um, it, it was the website honestly, that, that, uh, that seemed to be uh, the tool that they used to, uh, you know, looking at the website attracted them to the community and they, and they, they liked what they saw. Right. You know, it, it was not a case that, you know, I, I, had, I had sort of expected to find that people had a deep connection to the area, either went to school here, you know, parents had a house here, that kind of thing. And that, and that was not the case almost for anybody. Stuart, I have a question. Yeah. Um, what percentage of the people you spoke with have families and what percentage were like single couples? Uh, the majority were married um, and sure. that the, the, you know, a number of them have, I, I would, if I had to, I'd have to go back and look at the numbers, but I would say the majority had, um, majority meaning maybe 60% had, had young children and 40% were either older with, you know, kids gone or or without children, but I, I would have to check that number, Joe. Thank you. Okay, should I keep going? What attracted what attracted people to Woodstock is are the things that we would we would suspect. Um, its location, its uh, the fact that it's an outdoor uh, community. Um, what was interesting was how many people commented on it being the quintessential uh, New England community. And that was very attractive to them, that they wanted the, the quintessential community. They wanted the sense of community. They wanted the attractive downtown. Uh, they liked the fact that the population is engaged and, and involved in town government and town life. And those were all factors which people mentioned as being uh, critical to their decision to move. Um, yeah, everybody spoke to the outdoors, you know, the aspects of the sports and the you know, being able to hike and the foliage and the, you know, three season, four season town, all of that. But people kept coming back to the quintessential New England town and the sense of community with an engaged population. So that was, um, that was a, a very positive feature that, that people kept commenting on. 
In terms of the challenges or concerns, I sort of asked people, uh, what concerns or challenges did you have before you moved? And then what concerns or challenges do you feel now that you're here? And in some cases they were the same, in some cases they were different. Um, high real estate taxes are a common theme. Uh, it, it keeps coming up at, at how much the, the taxes are. You know, affordability and availability of housing really did not come up that much, which I thought was interesting, but it could be because it's sort of a self-selection process. In other words, if you couldn't find a home or you couldn't afford to be here, it, you, I didn't get to talk to you. Um, so it, it did not come up as a, as a specific theme that, that people had, although in general, uh, younger people seem to be more aware of it and concerned about it than older people. In other words, retirees didn't express as big of a concern regarding housing as younger people did. Um, I would say that this, the, the desire for a year round community um, was, was a concern as well as an attractive feature. In other words, people came because they liked the fact that that is a year round community and one that is engaged. And then there was a concern expressed that, you know, they didn't wanna live in a tourist town. Uh, exclusively. They recognized how important tourism is to the community, but they didn't want it to be an exclusive. They didn't want it to become Nantucket, uh, where um, the numbers are so out of whack. So I thought that was an interesting sort of uh, dichotomy or, or, or dilemma that, that people expressed. The um, worn out infrastructure in downtown in need of a facelift came up uh, in numerous conversations. Um, and on the one hand, people say that the, the, what brought them here is the attractiveness, how attractive the town is. And then at the same time, there's not, not, a, not an over stressing of it, but just a comment that the infrastructure you know, seems worn out and, 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 and you know, need, needs, needs a facelift. And it, it typically revolves around the business, the buildings that you would expect to come up in those conversations, um, as well as things like um, you know, the sidewalks, trees needing to be replanted and some of the holes. I mean, just little things that come up. Um, so I thought that was sort of an interesting comment. And then just the, the, this, this theme that there's relatively few places for young people to gather and socialize in. And, um, you know, that again was more often expressed by younger people uh, than obviously it was by older. I asked about suggestions that they have. In other words, once we got through the concerns, uh, you know, what are some things they'd like to see? What would, um, what would, what would they think would make Woodstock, um, you know, more fun, more interesting, whatever? However, I, you know, it was phrased. Um, a, a common theme was just a more vibrant downtown. Uh, that it gets quiet really early, and um, the the senses that, you know, additional restaurants that would provide. Um, some variety and, and be attractive would sort of serve as a catalyst to bring more people downtown. Um, there's a typo there. I didn't mean that good variety will lead to attractive people. I meant that good variety will attract people into the downtown. Um, the farmer's market, they, uh, a number of people commented on the desire to have a stronger farmer's market downtown on Saturday. They felt that if that were the case, uh, it would just bring more people into the downtown and become you know, perhaps where you would go for your shopping on Saturday, and they thought that would be that would be attractive. Um, the interesting stores, I think, are along the lines of interesting restaurants. People felt that um, it, it, not chain stores, but interesting stores, which are um, sort of quintessential Vermont, would would be would be interesting and attractive. The idea of um, of, of this, I, I say expanded weekend festivals, fairs, concert series and activities came up from a number of different people in a number of different ways. And the idea was just the, uh, the, the feeling that the town has so much to offer and could we find a way to um, expand on that through um, a, a, a Woodstock music festival, a, um, you know, a, a series of, of summer of summer Woodstock music festivals, as an example, or theater, or something like that, where um, there would be a regular cadence of things that would bring people into downtown. And I think on this subject, you know, recognizing that these are relatively new residents in town and they, they've been here during the COVID period, they really haven't um, 
you know, when I asked, had you been to this event or that event, Taste of Woodstock, et cetera, um, they hadn't because they hadn't been here that long and they hadn't seen it. But that theme was one that that came up and it, and it came up often in concert as they were sort of commenting on the East End Park and what an attractive facility that was and how could we use it more often uh, or make better use of it. Um, signage and here. Um, is that aimed at me? Um, okay, I'll keep going. Um, signage and street furniture, uh, just you know, little comments that were made here and there that the, the sense is that we could uh, consolidate or get better, better, better uniformity, consistency, attractiveness of the signage uh, that's used in street furniture, garbage cans, benches, things like that. Uber came up as you know, uh, a question of why we didn't have Uber in town. Um, and then this, this sense that government could be more accommodating and supporting of business. I, I don't really have a lot to expand on that. There's just a sense that, um, that there's more that we could do to support businesses. Um, lots of different sort of ideas and things were cross tossed around restaurants, having seating outside, closing down streets to be able to have, you know, more activities on the streets on weekends, things like that. Nothing particular that came up, um, but what I would say uh, in general from the conversations that I've had and the poll that I had with people is um, the move here has been better than, they and, than better than expected for virtually everybody. They're looking at this as a permanent place to stay. They wanna get involved and engaged in the community and the life of the community. They realize that Woodstock is something precious and they want to support it and not destroy it um, through changes, but it's protected and preserve it. Um, and so it was a really positive series of conversations with people who are excited to be members of the community, excited to get engaged, and are looking forward to um, being able to interact with people in a non-COVID environment, which hopefully is upon us shortly. So that is probably longer than John wanted, but that, no, that no, is no, the that, uh, upshot of what, what we found. No, Stuart, that was fantastic. Very, um, very concise actually so comments or questions um i mean it's obviously it's obviously it, it's not that surprising but it's incredibly helpful to hear it and to have you you know uh pass on what new folks are thinking and i hope you'll continue i think you will continue to to complete i, I think you know to do more interviews not without limit but but to continue to yeah. contact folks and so yeah, i think it's quite will. valuable uh, comments or questions for Stuart? Or, or observations about implications of this for us? Or should we simply digest this? And uh, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, are you gonna continue to speak to people? Or is this sort of the end or will you be expanding on this further? Yeah, no, I've, I've got about another 10 people I think I can reach out to that I have, you know, I have contact information for and, and I've reached out to once or twice and I can, I can follow up with and I intend to continue that. What I've found at this point, having done as many as I've done is the, the feedback is getting repetitive. You know, I'm hearing the same themes from people. So but what I was thinking of doing is, is taking it to the next stage and trying to isolate down into a few areas where we can, you know, for example, if there's really a lot of energy around, you know, weekend activities, maybe we can do some things about getting people involved in that effort or, you know, whatever. I just, just to theme it down into a few areas where we can take action. Yeah, I, but I, yes, I will. I will do some more. I, I'll try to do another ten or so. I raise the question only because you know you, you hear there's over 100 new students in the school, uh, and it, it makes me wonder you know, where the where the breakout is of older retiring people coming here versus younger families. Uh, you know, so this uh, I don't know if you had a percentage in there or not but it was you know that's one of the things i'd be curious to to understand better yeah and 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 i i should say it's a good question patrick and i i thought i was going to get actually more people um and it was hard getting names you know <laughs> so i would i posted on the list serve and then i would talk to somebody and they would give me someone else's name that they knew um i was going to go to the school but i was told that they couldn't release the information um, and the school is more than just Woodstock. I was really focusing people just, you know, right around here, but, but I, I agree with you. I expected to get more and I will do some stats on the age and the number of kids. I think that's a good data point. I can, I can expand on that. Okay, great. Um, uh, wonderful. Thank you. 
I got a question for Stuart. This is uh, Michael Malley. Hey. Hey, Stuart, did you, um, in talking to people, did you find that there were differences in what people wanted based on age? So were younger families looking for certain things um, versus the older people? Or is it everybody kind of looking for the same thing? Uh, I did not. I did not see much difference in terms of age. Uh, there was really not. Uh, interestingly, the um, the only difference that I did see or hear was uh, older couples were more focused on the diversity and the desire to enhance the diversity of the community. Um, but I don't know. I, I wasn't asking that specifically, so I don't know whether that just came up in those conversations. And you know, I, I wasn't trying to steer the conversation in any one way. Um, so I I can't tell you that there was any particular breakdown by age. That that was not clear. People were pretty. What was interesting was how uniform the responses were in terms of what brought them to Woodstock and what they'd like to see in Woodstock. So those, right. those, the feedback was really consistent across the board on those two areas. I mean, they might express it differently. You know, one person says, I wish we had a Mexican restaurant. One person says, I wish we had a pizza place, but everybody talked about the desires for other restaurants or unique store, things like that. Um, and that was across the board, regardless of age. Yeah, and I think if you interview more people, even people that have been here for 20 years, you're gonna get the same thing and it will become redundant because I feel like, you know, since I've been on the EDC, this is the kind of stuff that people want, 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 and we just have to figure out how to make it happen. Yeah. And really what I was wondering, well, honestly, the thing I was trying to get at was whether people saw themselves as being here for 12, 18 months until COVID cured and then they're leaving, or did they view themselves as coming here and coming here permanently? And what I would say is across the board, they view themselves as coming here permanently. They don't view this as a, uh, you know, a short-term stop where they're going to leave and head back to wherever they came from. That is, that was not the sense or the, or the uh, feedback that I was given. They've uh, only been here for one winter. That's why. <laughs> now, actually, you know, it's funny because some people talked about that. That was a concern. And now that they're here, they love it. So I thought that was, that was positive. Um, I was just going to comment that when we did our visioning project a couple of years ago, very similar comments. From so people that have been here for quite a while, as Michael was saying, I think that I think that they're, you know, they're the same. I mean, the same concerns, um, even if you've been here quite a while. So, so it's very consistent, and it's interesting to hear that it's, it's, you know, they figured it out right away. So, Joe and then Patrick. Um, I, I I really think it's all great information and valuable, and, and can be used very constructively. I I, I, I was. Uh, interested in what Stuart said about uh, them wanting things and not knowing that those things actually do exist. They just haven't been here long enough to learn that they do. And it would be probably productive to do something with the chamber and coordinate something with the chamber just to let people keep a more up-to-date um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, an up-to-date event kind of calendar or schedule, letting people know, you know, what is going on. And, um, and you know, uh, keeping, a, a, keeping them abreast of the activities that do exist in town. Yeah. Uh, Patrick? I, it seemed to me too that a lot of the comments uh, aligned with the student uh, report, uh, particularly in looking for uh, venues for, you know, late night activity and so forth, uh, which I definitely think is, is something that Woodstock needs to, to look at. Uh, you know, the, the streets do roll up at about seven o'clock. If not sooner. Larry? I was gonna say that's, that's on Friday night. Yeah. Larry? <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, did but you I go to bed at eight thirty. I go to bed by nine, so that's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, the, the, your last thing about suggestions suggested that some 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 of these people did not feel like the town government was sufficiently supportive of business. It struck me as odd, given that they had just gotten here. 
And I, I was wondering if there was some specific issues involved or where, where did that notion come from? I think it was more comments that people gather, you know, when you're new in town, you're out talking to people and trying to figure your way around and stuff. And I think it was more comments that were picked up um, third part, you know, I don't think it was firsthand experience. I think it was comments picked up from talking to someone who had that perspective, you know, um, but that's, that's, you know, I'm just reporting back the comments that sort of came up in conversations. Right. And, you know, you talk to a lot of people and the comments are made two or three times. And so I tried to flag those sorts of things, but I, you know, I think it boils back to, to, um, I, well, I don't know how to express it really, but, um, you know, a, a question of is, is the town leadership government, uh, whatever the right term, is it forward leaning or is it protecting status quo? Is it looking to be something different? Is it looking to maintain what exists? And so I think there's that probably a natural tension that exists in, in that sort of a position, Larry, but I don't, I, I don't have any, honestly, I don't have anything more than that. I'm, 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 I'm sort of reporting back what uh, you know, what, what, what the sense was that I got from the, the conversation. I guess, I guess my, my feeling is that it, there, there seems to be something of a perception of that around. And yet when you really dig into it, uh, you know, I don't think, um, the, the government's unsupported for sure. And, um, uh, I, my thought is it would be really, we, we might try to work to get that idea, um, uh, change so somehow you know yeah. that's, that that uh, that this town does welcome new business and we have an EDC and we have um, we're we're anxious to support new businesses coming in. It'd be, and I should say that just, people, just wondering why why new people had that idea as well. I think it's too bad that that, that well, idea is one of the one of the things that I um, did pick up is how impressed people were with the effort that. Um, effort was being made through the EDC, through, through all the people that are involved in all these efforts, people sense there's a real energy around Woodstock, which I think is a positive, I mean, overwhelmingly positive. So I, I don't, just as a response to that. Yeah. Uh, Beth? I just wanted to um, say that Bill Corson from um, the uh, trustees and I are planning a, another meet and greet on the green um, for um, the beginning of September, just again to welcome people to a gathering. Hopefully, we'll get the select board. It won't be negative 22 degrees like it was the last time. But, you know, I encourage you when you're talking to people that we will be hosting that, you know, come the middle of summer. And, and um, it's a way to gather people together. And the other thing I, I should have mentioned, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to jump in, that the, the other theme that comes out is people want to be involved and engaged and help. And so, you know, I think to the extent we can reach out and get, and John, you've done this with a number of these committees. Um, I can think of a number of people that we've reached out to ask to help. You know, they want to help. They want to participate. And that, of course, always makes people feel uh, engaged when they're able to do that. So, um, all right. Well, this will continue to Patrick's question. You will continue. It's great that you're doing this. It's a terrific job. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's a lot of work to just call up these folks. And the fact that this isn't a survey as much as it is a series of interviews, I think is really, uh, is really important. So um, just a couple of quick observations about this, if I can just jump in. The, the, some things that maybe uh, haven't heard before and that, that this sort of reinforces. One is it's good to hear some positive feedback, actual practical feedback on the website, on the role of the website. Uh, you know, we have some great statistics, you'll see those in a minute, but it's good to hear that people actually used it in order to be part of their decision to move here. The second thing that I think is interesting is it's to some small extent, a confirmation of the visitor to resident pipeline. The fact that everyone who, who chose to move here had visited first. And I know that the marketing committee is thinking pretty importantly about the importance of visitors not because they're focused on visitors rather than residents, but because they think visitors gets you both visitors and residents. And I think that it, in a very small way, I don't know that it's statistically significant, but it's, it's nice to see that. And if you could continue to focus on, if you continue to ask that question when you ask the other 10 people, yeah. if you get to them. And the last thing is just from a marketing committee point of view, the importance of the quintessential 
New England town. And maybe that, I mean, that we all know that that's what it is, but maybe that's something that needs to be one of the handful of things we emphasize in the marketing, at least. And John, that came up time and time again. Almost everybody commented on that as being a, uh, you know, I would, I asked for the top three factors that caused them to come and almost everybody included that in their um, comment, which as part of the downtown investment committee, and you know, it's, it's useful to have that data. Right. So anyway, just something to think about. Okay. Um, let's move on. Uh, the next item is, um, I'll just flash the agenda quickly so we can just see it. Um, so the next items are basically working group updates. I don't know that all the working groups are need to have an update here. It may, I, I, the marketing group, I've asked Patrick to quickly summarize the statistics for each month. I think we should worth going through those. And then Patrick will update us on the, the other processes. So Patrick, if you can just go ahead. Okay, well, the, the website is doing its job and uh, pretty much all of the metrics are up. Uh, our new uh, coordinator, uh, Jen Schmitzky is, is doing a great job. Uh, someone made a comment to me the other day that, uh, you know, she's just jumped right in the spot and you, you're not seeing any, any difference. You know, it's not like this all of a sudden there's a different technique, a different look, a different feel. She's just picked it right up and, and, and run with it. So uh, she's doing a great job and a lot of these statistics, you know, coming out of the, the work that, uh, that she's doing. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, in, in terms of the marketing group, uh, we're meeting every other every other week, uh, and right now the uh, the RFP is out. Uh, we got a number of questions uh, from interested uh, agencies, uh, and so we've created a uh, addendum that was sent out to anybody who inquired, uh, answering several questions that that came up. Uh, so that's still in the works, and, and the, the, uh, I don't have the timing right in front of me of exactly when we're having everything, but, but that's uh, well on its way. Uh, we are looking at uh, some additions and changes to the website to just make it a little bit more uh, accessible, things like bringing the blog uh, in, into the navigation uh, so that, that people can find that quicker, uh, and some other cosmetic things that <clears throat> will just make it uh, work a little more from a marketing standpoint. Uh, we are also looking at uh, some social media things uh, using Facebook's pic uh, Facebook Pixel uh, and creating lookalike audiences from the uh, the email lists that we have between the EDC uh, and and the uh, chamber. Uh, so we're working on that uh, as we move forward, and we'll probably have some of that will probably come up uh, in the proposals from the agencies as well. Uh, let's see what else I got on my list here. And right now, that's that's pretty much pretty much where we are. We spent a lot of time uh, on the talking about the website and what might improve and what what else we can do while we uh, we wait for the responses to the RFP. Patrick, a quick question of scheduling wise. I believe the due date of the RFP is June fifteenth. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. And at the last meeting, the feeling of the EDC was to extend it or to possibly extend it. And I think you've decided to do that. So we've given people now a month to respond, which is, you know, enough time. The, yes. um, are we still, this has some relevance for a, an item later on in the agenda. Are we still thinking that we would like to hold, a, that once the marketing group has evaluated the RFPs and come to a recommendation that we'd like to hold a special meeting of the EDC prior to next month's meeting so that we can get it approved hopefully by the select board faster ideally that's what we want to do we just got to see how the proposals come in and, and the timing on that but most likely we'll need to have uh, a meeting okay then i'm just going to suggest it again i'm jumping ahead a bit because there's another suggestion for a special meeting between now and next month and it would make sense to coordinate these two rather than to have two different special meetings. So um, just keep that in mind, folks, when we when we come to the rest. And we won't decide that tonight. It sounds like Patrick, we, you guys are going to need. We need to know what your schedule and sequence is before we can do that. Yeah, and we're just we're waiting for the responses from people to come in and, and see. Okay, Jeff, did you have a comment? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering, John. Can you remind me if the EDC has actually approved the budget that we have presented? Because I don't. Uh, understand why would, that wouldn't be on the agenda for tonight. You, you have no. You have, we have not approved the budget. What we agreed at the last meeting 
was we put forward the budget, the proposed budget. We shared it, in other words, uh, and we said that the process was going to be that, I mean, and, uh, there wasn't people, there was no uh, uh, informal objection to it, but there was no formal approval of it either. We didn't try to and that we would vote on the budget when we had the recommended RFP. So that basically the marketing group would come forward and say, we now have, we're not surprising you. We've told you the amount, it was 110,000. You know, uh, we've ne we are now coming for formal approval to retain this firm for these reasons with this budget. And so I, I think that, it, I think people, I think the idea was that we'd feel more comfortable knowing specifically what we were gonna get because the RFP, as Patrick explained the last time, this is at least as I understand it, the RFP isn't saying we want you to do these precise things. It's saying we want you to tell us what are the things that you think we should do. So I think we felt that too. I, I don't think that personally, I would say I don't see a major problem, but you know, I don't anticipate a major problem, but I think that we'd all feel more comfortable, or at least I would feel more comfortable. And I think the EDC did voting for something that they, where they knew. That was the rationale. Uh, okay, I, I, you know, one, one of my thoughts on that, though, is, I mean, we're asking these different agencies to put in time to create videos to have these responses, and we're telling them what the estimated budget is, and then uh, if we find an agency that we do want to hire, do we then pull the rug out and say, oh, no, we're not, we haven't approved that amount? Uh, I think we're, to me, we're it's a little, uh, not, I don't quite understand that approach versus um, approving a budget provided that we find an agency that is approved. Yeah, well, I think given the magnitude of, of the size of it, I, I, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's a fair point, but I think we, um, I mean, if, if other people would like to, 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 to vote on that tonight, we could. I mean, I, I would be a bit uncomfortable. I, I don't see... I'm not worried about those that the firms, you know, I spent a long time as a consultant, you write proposals and sometimes you, you know, budgets disappear. I don't have any qualms about that. It's not unethical and so forth. Uh, so I, I don't see why we wouldn't. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Any, uh, Ray, you had a comment, but then other responses to Jeff. Ray, Ray had raised his hand first. So, one second. so Ray, is it yeah. on this topic or do you want to? I just had a question on the, um, the, uh, Website. What's okay, well, that? hold hold it for one second. Let's just resolve this issue. I okay. think Patrick wanted to say something, and we'll come back to you, uh, Patrick. It, it, it's not unusual, uh, as you said, John, to not have it buttoned down. I mean, I've been in many pitches, and you know, sometimes they go away, and sometimes they're there. Uh, and I think we had written in the RFP, you know, based on an approved budget. So, uh, you know, I think I, I'm uncomfortable waiting to see what comes in. But uh, I do think we we really put a lot of thought behind uh, the numbers that we said based on what we need. Uh, and so, you know, I think, you know, I, the RFPs are just to me, just gonna solidify, you know, what we thought we needed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, until the until the select board <coughs> approves it, it's not approved regardless of what the EDC says. Exactly. Uh, um, that's why I thought if the EDC went ahead, fine. But I, I, I hear your point of view as well. Okay. Uh, Ray? Yeah, I'm just curious what, what the website numbers were compared from 2019 in May. I mean, going from COVID to this year is a lot different than if it was a regular year. Ray, I'd have, have to pull that together. Uh, but we could, you know, I could, I could send that to you. We have the numbers. It's just a matter right. of doing a, a, a 1921 or 2021 comparison. Uh, I'll, I'll put that together. It'll be, that'll be a good thing to look at. I right, just curious. That's all. Thank you. Uh, okay. All right, Patrick, anything else on marketing? That's it for now. Okay. Uh, just quickly, I'm going to just give a very quick update on housing. The housing group has met. Um, there's, we've started to, we've taken the recommendations of the prior uh, housing group, <laughs> which was to focus on accessory dwelling units and, and a few other kind of low hanging fruit. Um, we've, we've taken the time to try to set a, a broader set of aspirations for the housing project and then to, and, and those 
recommendations from the prior group all fit into that broader kind of vision for it. Um, but we haven't fully agreed on what that is. We're kind of narrowing in on it. So I think at the next meeting, we'll be able to say that. There's also been uh, some of the members of that group have been working on the economics of housing development. And I think some very interesting ideas um, are coming up to try to put some numbers around from an investor perspective. Uh, what, you know, is it attractive to develop housing financially, develop housing in Woodstock? And I think we'll have some insights into what it costs to develop, what an investor might look at, and whether or not funding from, you know, philanthropy or the government is needed in order to incent housing, and if so, how much, and, and so forth. So that's to come, but I think we're, we're discussing all those things, and it's, it's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of work to do. Our objective is by the end of this calendar year to have a proposal for housing that would start at next year. So. Are there any other working groups that have um, that have any updates that you'd like to make? There's no need to, but you're absolutely welcome to. This is the time. Uh, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, there's a question in the uh, in the chat about the van pool. Oh yeah. Uh, just as as we could get an update on that. Yeah, sorry. There there was a. Um, there was a pause in that effort uh, due to some personal issues that uh, is, you know, just to sort of leave it at that. Um, I hope, hoping that those are resolved and we can kind of get back on track with it, but, but I don't have any more of an update yet. There's not been a decision. We haven't made a lot of progress, but there hasn't been a decision to stop it. So um, I, I'll try to coordinate and see whether we can, we can push that forward. Um, it, it's, I'm sorry, I don't have more to report on that. So. Um, but sorry, that was Isabel's question in the chat. I thank you for highlighting that. Are there any other working group updates before you get to project updates? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Larry. Uh, yeah. Well, just the the, the policy group. Uh, we sent out the survey. We to thirty different businesses. Only six have replied. We don't know whether to interpret that as uh, well. How to interpret that? But we're going to resend it out with a more vigorous request. Uh, to uh, trying to get more participation. So that, that and, and we're going to be meeting also to find out what beyond uh, 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 beyond the response to policies and regulations that we're getting from the businesses do we want to look into. For instance, um, uh, constraints on using the um, uh, the, the, the green for uh, farmers markets on weekends and that kind of stuff. That's where we're at. Patrick? Uh, remind me, this was just downtown businesses or was this yes. just downtown businesses? Yep. I think this guy, I, I had seen some of the uh, correspondence, Larry, between you and Jeff and, and trying to figure out what does it mean that only six re replied. And it relates a little bit perhaps to and this may be why you asked, you were the one who asked, Larry, we asked Stuart's survey where the, his last comment was that you know it appears that local businesses I mean that local government isn't that helpful to local businesses and I, I think it's important for us to somehow get to the bottom of whether or not there are in fact specific barriers to local businesses being successful here because in the end we can only operate on that and I understand it you know it may take us a while or it may we may have to use different techniques but it's just interesting that that that's what you know, so we shouldn't draw any conclusions from it yet. So, Beth? Um, I just wanted to say to Larry that if you have, you know, a few minutes and would like to talk about farmers markets, is we've been part of NOFA, the Northeast Organic Farming Association since 2007. You know, I'd be happy to share some of our insights and, and some of their information um, for you. Great. That's great, Beth, thank you. Okay, um, all right, then the last items on the agenda are project updates. Um, Teagle, I think we have a brief update from Joe and Beth on Teagle's Landing and also on trash can selection and, and other related enhancements. So here, let me, sorry, let me. Um... Other related enhancements. That's great, John, I like that. Yeah. So go ahead. Well, just give um, a quick update on Teagle's Landing first. I, just, I, I spoke with um, Simon while, uh, this afternoon, and um, things uh, where things are right now is waiting for the railings to be completed. 
Uh, it'll probably take another couple of weeks. Nothing really can be done until that's done. Uh, I suggested that we not move the um, picnic tables or if the crash can comes in, not put that down there until the railings are in. Point one, it would be easier to move that stuff down there without railings. And secondly, if we put it down in now, there might be an invitation to people who want to start using the landing now and without the railings, it probably be not only unadvisable, it wouldn't be safe. So uh, essentially, it's it, we're waiting for the rails. That's the bottom line. And we think that there'll be a couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, any other questions on that? Yes, Pat. Is there a way maybe to do a temporary railing? Something. Well, just we 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 talked about that, you know. But then you have to construct all these wooden railings all the way around. And by the time you get all that done, the real ones are going to be pretty, pretty, pretty close to being completed. So, you know, the, the, one of the big concerns is the first landing to the left. And then there's a retaining wall that drops right onto a stone pathway to the brook and other stones down there. And you'd really have to uh, construct something that would prevent somebody who might want to lean over and look at the brook and it not break and them falling in the brook. I mean, I, I, I honestly believe, you know, we've, we've done all the right things so far. I think, and that place hasn't been um, very attractive for a long time. I think prudence here is just to wait for the railings to come in, get them installed. The the people who are making them will do the installation, so it's done right, and then it'll it'll be there to enjoy and not have to worry about anything. That's that's my sense anyway. Larry, Larry, yeah, hey, 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 Joe, are you thinking of a dedication ceremony at the appropriate time? Yeah. You know, been discussed, but you know I'm kind of leaving that up to Beth and John. They they can uh, they can kind of decide on that. I know Beth has this big pair of green scissors hanging in her office, just itching to be used. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and John, I'm sure what you know, it, it's it is it's it's a I feel a great accomplishment. It's going to be a great thing for the town. Um, um, so yeah, maybe you know something can be organized. But again, it'll have to be done, not until everything's done and completed. But yeah, probably uh, will be. Beth? Beth and then Larry. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to say, speaking of the big green scissors, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, we're going to do the official ribbon cutting for the Village Butcher, which looks just amazing. It so is. It is. It is. Join us if you have time. Jeff? Yeah. Joe, has anyone looked into yet the acquisition of a backless bench to go? Oh, yeah, we, oh, we, 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 we have plans for that. And uh, uh, Cy, as part of the project, is putting together a granite bench to fit on that slab, and that will be backless. Great, thanks. Yep. OK, any other Teagles Landing? Questions, comments, on Okay, and then the trash can selection, Joe, I don't know if you saw these, I have the pictures. I, Joe, I thought what we should do here is just update the, the EDC on, we're not making any decisions tonight. We're proposing a process that to have a special meeting so that the public can opine on this. So Joe, why don't you, you wanna share what you know so far? Those are, the, well, let me back up a little bit. We'd like to hold a, a, a public meeting a week from today and allow the public to comment on um, a selection of the trash cans that um, we can put throughout the town. Now, what we have now, those all look great, great. Um, 
there are 14 locations that have been identified. I think the money that has been released would purchase eight. Is that correct, Beth? Beth, you're muted. Yes. I think, yes. There yeah. would, and so if we want to uh, purchase more and kind of fill out those uh, empty spots that the new ones won't fill, we're going to have a discussion about that a week from um, today, as a matter of fact. And Joe, excuse me one second. Just from a timing point of view, this is what I was referring to when I was asking right. Patrick when they want to have their special meeting. So let's, in the next 24 hours, Joe and Beth and Patrick, can we coordinate and try to figure out what the schedules are? Because basically both the marketing and the trash can discussion, we're trying to accelerate because the sooner the better we can we can get this going in anticipation of people starting to travel and Vermont opening back up and all of that. Yeah. And so we're trying to, but I don't think we can have special meetings every week. So we're trying to accelerate, but let's, we just need to coordinate the dates. I, I, I think that's an excellent idea, you know, and, and um, there'll be other topics involved. I mean, we want, um, we have two spots on the um, tribal park that have the old benches which we would like to replace with the newer version that exists um, on the green and a couple other spots in town. Uh, that's, that's, that was about 450 apiece. What we talked about is that to dress up Central Street and the commercial district, there are two spots on Central Street that previously there's their black squares in the sidewalk that had trees in them. And it would be great if we could replace those empty spots and actually fill in trees, put in trees. And I spoke with ben, uh, with Cy and uh, he said it would cost about a thousand dollars a piece to put new trees in there. Um, so you see a, a, a $49, um, $100, total would be for replacing the green. Oh, and there's one other item. There's the, the, um, the round bench that circles the, uh, one of the trees in the middle of the green. It's really in bad shape. It looks terrible. It's six sided. So um, I researched with um, Britons and with Baker Lumber um, and it seems as though the best wood to use would be a red oak. And it would cut, we're talking about $2,000 worth of wood. Um, hopefully, the village can do the replacement. I'd be willing to go down and take the old wood off and, and paint the, the metal stanchions. But the, the, um, the existing bench was installed by the village trustees or the village uh, workers. And hopefully we can get them to do it again. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll, um, I'll urethane them and sand them down and get them ready, but they can cut them and, and install them. And that I think would be a nice thing to do with the green because right now that, that bench doesn't look very nice. So, uh, uh, sorry, excuse uh, me one second, Jude. Beth, I think uh, wanted to in interject something. Hi, Beth. No, you're muted now. I'm sorry. Can we go back to the trash cans? I just want to clarify to people something. So this trash can right here, the Urban Renaissance trash can for $1,600 is a split stream so that half of it is recycling, half of it is um, trash. trash. And so you only need one of those. It takes up less room. I'm a little biased takes up less room on the sidewalk. Um, that is the can that we have purchased for um, Teagle's Landing. Um, but we thought we should bring a few different um, proposals. So a couple of different options for people to consider. Right. So now the one on the far left, that is a single 
trash can and you would require two, one for recycling, one for trash. In my opinion, just my opinion, it takes up an awful lot of room on the sidewalk. The one in the middle is plastic. Two sides, one trash, one recycle. Is it as attractive as the other one? No, but it doesn't look bad. And, and that's something that, that can be dis discussed uh, next Thursday. Um, right. And that's an $800 uh, item. One thing to keep in mind with these trash cans is that currently uh, the ones that we have, which are most like the one on the left, right, yeah. um, are, are overflow as it is on busy times or, or weekends in season. And getting smaller ones, I think, is a mistake. We end up wearing up a trash on the sidewalks. Um, it looks horrible. So I would rather take up space on the sidewalk and have uh, the trash can be able to hold the trash as necessary than the other way around. But that's one opinion. Well, so let, 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 that's, 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 a valid, that's a valid issue, uh, Jeff. But I, I think one of the one of the ways to mitigate that issue is speaking with Casella and maybe having a more frequent pickup during the season. I mean, we discussed that last time when we initially were uh, trying to make a, a call on which trash can to use. And we had the reps from Casella with us. And I think Larry uh, was the one who organized that. And they did mention that if, it, if needed, they would come more frequently. Let me just interrupt for one second because I, th th uh, this is a just this is a little bit confusing as to the process here that that we're proposing. The the um, we were not able to have the we we just released the funds at the last meeting. The, the community has already agreed that this is I'm mean, sorry the EDC has already agreed based on community input that we're going to spend sixteen thousand dollars on trash cans. We want we want to have a public meeting to pick the trash cans because you know it's and if people have points of view like Jeff you just had you know we'll ask you to come to the meeting and propose that point of view it's very valid but but we don't want to pick them tonight we want to have that public input so we can basically you know use the yeah, wisdom right. from the public that's the right. what what's also being proposed here which I'd like this is something that we should decide tonight uh, is what the agenda for that special meeting should be. It's clearly going to include the first items on here to select the design. And also, if we don't decide to expand the funding, which we haven't decided yet, hasn't been a request yet, there's going to be, then which of the 13 locations are the most important? Because we can only, you know, I mean, it's not that big a deal, but we'll pick the, uh, presumably the ones I would think in the center of the center of the town mostly. So that's clearly we have to do. And once we do that, the money is already funded. As soon as we have that special meeting, the select board actually doesn't need to approve it. As soon as we have that public meeting, we can go, because they've already approved it. <laughs> we can just go ahead and, and purchase the selected cans and place them in the selected locations. Joe has proposed um, and you know ran it by me and I'm comfortable with this personally, whether that, that doesn't really matter, but he checked at least with me. And he's proposing that we kind of finish off some of the small things that in most cases, the public has, we've already gotten input from the public that we wanna have cleaner benches and we never didn't quite finish the project. Um, and so he's proposing that in addition at this special meeting, we put forward a proposal for $4,900 to do a couple of these other things that would sort of clean up again with the idea like the marketing budget that we have a one, sort of a one-time opportunity that look, this summer, people are gonna come, they're gonna visit. We already see the relationship between visitors and residents. It's, you know, should we vote some additional, just a small amount of additional funds so that we can quickly finish up some of these other projects and so forth. So I guess the question for EDC members is, are you comfortable with that as a, as a agenda item for this special meeting that will take place either in a week or it'll take place between now and our next meeting? Uh, either in a week or 10 days or sometime in, in, in mid-June. Does anyone have any points of view about whether we should or should not be doing that? What, what uh, I'm not clear on what the total number we're talking about is. Uh, is it, is it 4,900? Uh, not including the trash cans. It's, it's 4,900 if we decide to ask for more trash cans, depending on which trash cans we ask for, it could be more than that. Okay, that's the 16,000. The 16,000 has already been approved. 
Okay. And, and so yeah. we're going to we're going to buy sixteen thousand dollars worth of trash cans. We're going to decide at this meeting which trash cans to buy. <laughs> Okay, but but right. Joe, Joe has proposed it's not unreasonable to say, listen, we've got, you know, and this is consistent with some points you've made in the past, Jeff, and points, I think, which the EDC agreed generally on last time, which is let's get the marketing budget out there as soon as we can, because we're trying to catch a wave. I think Joe, in the same spirit, is saying, you know, there's a little bit of cleanup that we do. We know people want to clean up the benches. We did that already, but we haven't done all of them. Let's just finish it. Um, you know, he, he points, you know, we, we know we might want to get more trash cans because we can't get, we cut the budget in half a year ago. Do we want to do, so it's really a question from a process point of view, are EDC members comfortable having this public meeting, seeking input and then deciding or not to propose some extra, a small amount of extra spending to the select board in addition to deciding on the trash cans, which we will do anyway. So does anyone have a, any EDC members have a point of view about, about this? And then afterwards, if anyone else has a point of view. It seems to me that these are loose ends and we should tie them up. Okay. A anyone else? Did anyone who's not on the EDC feel like this is somehow not, and have any concerns? Sally? Um, I just want to clarify that we're not getting the RFPs back for the website. I'm looking at my calendar until the 16th and then we uh, actually have some interview time um, I guess at the 15th so we're not going to the, the marketing group is not going to make a decision before the 18th of May of June. You know, I understand and that's why I said we need to coordinate because this schedule wouldn't fit with that and we just realized that when Patrick was giving the update so we will coordinate that in the next with you guys in the next day or at most. We'll, so we'll so the, the earliest that you could have a special meeting is the week of the 21st. Okay. How, how, does, how does that fit with the select board's schedule? Yeah, well, let's do this offline. We understand what the objective is. Okay. We, if that's okay, because it's we're all we're trying to obviously we have to go through the steps and we want to get it. We want to give people time to the marketing. Can, yeah, I think we all under, right. We all we're trying to avoid having two special meetings. I suppose if, yeah. if we can't avoid that, then we won't. Any other comments about this process? Are you comfortable? We're sort of. You know, it's a small amount of money, but we're sort of squeezing it in a little bit. I, I would just say that I think it, it, I would encourage us if we're going to replace the trash cans, let's replace as many trash cans as we possibly can. Let's just get it done. Um, and I think this kind of spending just as a citizen and as a non committee member, I think this kind of spending is important. Let's get it finished and not spend a ton of time talking about it. Okay. Um, Okay, good. Um, there's a. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat. To, um, the the um, I, there's no one. Yeah, I think. Well, there's some. <laughs> Kareem, I think, was saying that we shouldn't be focused on this, but he's also logging off. So <laughs> I think he, he's he's perhaps admitting defeat on this point. Okay, it sounds like but, there's. But no you know, respectfully, having talked to as many people as I did on the survey, I would disagree with Kareem. I think this kind of thing. <laughs> it, it does have a visual impact on the town, and I think it's it's a bigger visual impact than we might recognize from the small items that they are. It's it's you know one of the things about Woodstock that when you when you go, it's the fact that we don't have electrical wires you know up on downtown and they've been they've been put down. You don't realize it right away, but it has a it's a you know it's something that stands out in your eye as a feature. I think these things are, are in that same category. Yeah. yeah, and, and these are I, all loose I agree, that, that, I agree too. That's one of the reasons why I was so passionate about it right from the beginning. I think these little things do add up. And it, it, if the first impression works, then maybe, yeah, we get somebody else to move here. Yeah. Okay, so no objections. So we will, the only, the only opening, so the agenda will be this full agenda as we're talking about here. We'll have a special meeting and we'll do our best to try to coordinate that so we can both move quickly and only have one meeting. And so Patrick, Sally, uh, well, all of there's a number of you. We'll we'll coordinate that um, tomorrow. So, okay. And Joe and Beth, again, thanks for your work on these projects. Um, I think that's basically it. Um, I'm seeing. I don't think in the chat that we, we dealt with the transportation question. Um, are there uh, any uh, any other comments? John, Beth? Does, does Ray have his hand raised? You know, I I can't tell. Okay. If Ray, if you're still there and we're looking very closely at your pens and one 
what I'm assuming is a grandchild who might be a hockey player or sitting next to Santa Claus. Oh, there you go. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Um, yeah, I just got a question. You're going to have your next meeting uh, live. Are you thinking of going live? That's a good question. Um, my, my let's just go around and see EDC members. Well, first EDC members and then others. My own view is I'm ha I'm personally happy to go live, but I would like to have the ability to also have remote participants, and we can technically do that. It's a little bit of work. Uh, is there any anyone any other? I, 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 John, I like that idea. I mean, you know. Uh, it really does give people an opportunity to participate in a meeting and really learn what's going on. I mean, so many times in the past, why did you do this and why did you why didn't you come to the meeting? Right. Now this gives them one more opportunity to, to attend. I think it's a great idea. Larry, yeah, um, can we have the option of uh, of attending by Zoom as well? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was saying. Oh, that. I thought you meant just the public. Okay. I, one, one other quick comment about the trash cans is when we brought this up earlier, there seemed to be some strong uh, feeling that they were too expensive. And I know just from, you know, working initially <coughs> with Joe and Beth and whatever, that that's what these things cost. And I, uh, we should be prepared for people being uh, aghast at the price and just be able to, um, show them why, why they're so expensive because they are. It, it's true. I had to buy these uh, buy trash cans for my motel and, and it's ridiculous how much a trash can costs. Yeah. But Actually, if we could, um, I want to come back and, and finish the answer to Ray's question, but Ray, on this specific point, you personally could be a really good independent source of information about this. I know you, you know, because of your background and your independence from the EDC. So whatever your point of view is about that, um, if you could share it at the meeting, um, that, that would be really be helpful because I think, yeah, for obvious reasons. So anyway, as a, non, as a non committee member, what I would say is I think this is an example of making up for deferred maintenance. Yeah. Making up for what, Stuart? Deferred maintenance. I mean, these things yeah, last for exactly. what, 10 years, 15 yep. years. So yep. Yep. Uh, any other any any other any disagreement with the consensus that we that the next meeting from now on will hold our meetings in person, but both. EDC members and members of the public could participate via Zoom if they choose, and we'll try to set up for that. Anyone object to that? Raise raise uh, hand up again. No, I think he, I think that's his last hand. Is that right? Yeah, okay. it is. How many hands does he have? Any other comments? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beth, I just have a comment about the timing because I'm on the marketing committee, and I know that that's going to take some time, and I'm on. I, I know more about trash cans than anyone wants to know. And it's going to take six to eight weeks once we order them, once you pick them. And so it seems like if we could have just one hour of a meeting to get the beautification finished, it, that's one focus. And, and marketing is a totally different focus. And, and that's just my opinion. I know it's more time for people, but it just seems like a, 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 the, what, the what we should do. Okay, Sally, did you want to comment? Yeah, I was just going to say that I think uh, I'm just even worried about rushing our marketing decision to, to get this out for that week of the 20th. So, I mean, okay. we're, meeting, we're meeting tomorrow with a marketing group, and I think we can talk about the schedule then. And really okay, understand and, what we think is was appropriate timing for that. All right. Well, well, let me ask then. Given that, given that, the other way we could go to accommodate both of those concerns on different, which push us in, in a common direction, I think, which is to say, would anyone on the EDC object if we have uh, a special meeting of the EDC in a week on the tenth, as Joe originally suggested, Thursday the tenth, just to focus on this agenda, the trash cans and the cleanup, and that we then wait for the marketing group who can take in their own trade-offs between how much time they want to spend to review these, how much interviewing. I mean, it is a year long program. The, you know, the difference of a few weeks may, may not make as much of a difference. And by the way, and unlike the trash cans, the marketing program can begin right away as soon as the select board approves the budget. We don't have to wait eight weeks to order anything. So we can, so maybe that we'll just leave it to chance then. And Patrick and Sally and Beth uh, and Jeff, you're the members of the marketing group. Most of you are here, actually. Um, 
there's a small risk that if we hold a meeting on June 10th, that we're not going to want to hold another meeting before, you know, our next, before July 1st, I think is our next meeting. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly happy. Is it, well, it, maybe I should say if the marketing group really needs a meeting near the end of June, is anyone, are, are, are EDC members willing to have a second meeting in late June if we need to? Yes, I am. Okay. Joe, you okay? Larry? Oh, sure. I'm fine with it. Michael? Um, I'm not, I think we still have Michael. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And Devin, are you okay with that? Yep, that sounds good to me. Okay, good. All right. So if, if worse comes to worse, so to speak, we can accommodate the marketing committee. So, all right, then we'll then we will schedule the meeting for the public meeting, a special meeting of the EDC for June 10th. And Sally, a special meeting. We have more than enough time to announce it, right? We have one week, so we're okay with all that, I think. Yep, it should be okay. Okay. So just back to Joe's original proposal. Is that Joe and Beth, you okay with that? Yes, fine. Beth, what time? Uh, 6 p.m. I'm gonna suggest the same time. Is it on Zoom or is it in public? Oh, well, if you guys wouldn't mind doing it on Zoom, because it, I, I, it takes a lot of work on my part to set it up remotely, right. to oh, do no, both. No, no. So. Zoom, Zoom no, fine. I, I think it's fine. Your presentation looked great. OK. Thank you. But just as long as I, I, I think it's important that it, there are enough announcements yeah. so people know it's going to happen. That's all. Right. Right. But I think Zoom is, is just Perfectly fine. Okay, so we'll start the in-person, Ray, to your comment, we'll start the in-person meeting on our July monthly meeting. That's fine. Jeff, last comment. Just a quick suggestion um, that if, if there are proposed uh, images for these trash cans, rather than people turning, turning it, tuning in on the Thursday and looking for the very first moment at them, that that be included on the listserv or wherever this is going so that people can at least uh, have some thought process behind it. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Uh, that way the comments, they're not going to be making spur of the moment comments, then they'll have a chance to actually look at them and think. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like we have a good plan. All right. Anything else? Can we adjourn? Adjourn. Is it, well, we need a motion to adjourn by, by Joe. Is there a second? Patrick, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We are adjourned at 719. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Take care.